Okay, now that we've seen the basic technique, I'm going to run through several examples, being a little bit more systematic um, with my notation, and um, we're only going to do the graphical technique for these. So the first thing we want to do to be a little bit more systematic is to label things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to label the region of space between each string with a letter. So I'm going to start with A, B, C. So I'm going to go just around in a circle like that. And we'll do more examples when we have uh, more strings to show you how that works. And then the thing I'm going to do is I'm always going to start with my load. So my downward load here is just going to be P. And I'm going to use a convenient scale uh, on my ruler. So you can use either metric or English units. I'm going to use inches because that's what my ruler is. So I'm going to draw a line here and make exactly one inch, just somewhere on the same diagram, but kind of off to the side. And so this is representative of my downward load P. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to label that point B, that point C, and this line in lowercase I'm going to call BC, right? Because it's the force between regions B and C. Now I'm going to draw lines for these other two, and I'm going to use different colors just so we can uh, keep the notation. So let's use uh, blue here. So let me draw this line. So I'm going to take the line uh, between C and A. I'm going to slide up here to point C. And I'm just going to draw it. I'm not going to worry about too much about where it ends. And so this is going to be line C, A. And just to keep the color straight, it's that line right there. Now let's use red for this one. I'm going to take this picture of the string. I'm going to slide up here, keeping that angle preserved. And I'm just going to draw so it intersects. Now, so this line is going to be A, B. Now I know where this point is. The intersection there is what I'll call point A. And that's it. So we've done this already before, uh, but now we've just been a little bit more systematic with our notation. So it's easier for us to go from this diagram to this diagram. So this is the form, the shape of the structure, and these are the forces. And again, these are vectors, right? So we are doing the free body diagram at this node has to form a closed triangle. Perfect. Let's do another example. So slightly more complicated, two strings. And remember, this is anchored to the wall, and this is anchored to the wall. Uh, keeping with our colors, I'm going to do uh, this one in blue, this one in red, and now I'll do this one in green. And now I'm going to label the spaces between the strings A, B, C, D. And now I'm going to have two loads here. And now I've got two weights of equal size. So these are equal loads. And again, I'm going to use one inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw those two loads, my two downward loads, and I'm going to stack them on top of each other. So I'm going to move off to the side here. I'm going to draw one two inch line and I'm going to mark this, those three points there. So those are my two loads. This is going to be point B. This is going to be point C. This is going to be point D. This is line BC and CD. And so now I just need to draw uh, Take the angles for these other lines. And so we'll start here with point D. So I'm going to come here to point D. And in blue, I'm just going to draw a line that goes kind of forever. Uh, I'm going to do my start from the outside. So I'm going to draw this one here. That's going from B to A. So I'm going to start at B, go there. And then finally, I'm going to draw the uh, one in the middle here and 
look at that. They all line up just like they're supposed to. So now let's draw some notation here. So this point where they all meet is point A. This is line DA. Right, we're going from D to A, A to B, and A to C. And so those are my two force triangles. All right, so one force triangle here is associated with the free body diagram of that node. The other triangle here is associated with the free body diagram of that node. All right, look how easy this is. And again, uh, if I want to know what the actual uh, forces are, like the force at this reaction here, I simply measure the length of this line. In this example, I get about two and a half inches. Uh, so that means in units of our downward load P is one unit. Uh, that's about two and a half times uh, that load. Perfect. Let's do another one. All right, here we go. So same system, but a little bit different configuration because now you can see these are much, much shallower angles. So again, let me draw my notation here. A, B, C, D. I have two loads both of the same size. So I'm gonna draw two uh, downward uh, one inch lines to represent my two loads. So here to here. So this is point A, sorry, this is point B, this is point C, and this is point D. Because this downward load right here is my line BC, this line here is C, D. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna do this uh, uh, all in black, so I'm not gonna color code it, because I think you're starting to see. Whoa, look at that, I didn't draw it quite long enough. I almost run off the paper here. And then let me draw the third one here connecting point C. So this out here is point A, and you can see a little bit of error because my lines don't quite all come together. But again, this line here is DA, this one here, BA, and this one here, A to C. And so now we can see uh, very visually uh, what happens is I pull these strings out further and further and further is that the force goes way, way up, right? Because remember the length of the line is the force. And so now we have the same as we had before. We have the same uh, two units of force pulling downwards, but this line here now, the reaction force here, <clears throat> is about five and a half. So it's about five and a half times the weight of any single one of these. And you can kind of see as I make this structure flatter and flatter and flatter and flatter by pulling out harder and harder, this triangle just simply elongates and force gets greater and greater. So this graphical technique can give us a very kind of visual way to understand uh, what's happening in these structures. All right. Let me do one final example. Now let me do this one a little bit more carefully. Region A, B, C, D. Now the difference here is that um, uh, we have two, two weights here and one here. So now let me show you how to take care of that. And again, let me, let me color code this one just to be super clear about what's going on. So those will be my three strings. Now I need to draw my uh, downward loads, B to C, C to D. Uh, but this is gonna be two units and this is gonna be one unit. So I'm gonna draw a three inch line. So I'm gonna start here and that will be point B, one inch, make a mark. That'll be point C, oops, I just messed that up. Two inches, that'll be point C. And then one inch, that'll be point D. Perfect. All right, so now let me take the blue line here, the line that connects D to A. 
get a line that looks like that. Let me go to the red line, the line that connects A to B. Perfect. Now this will be point A. This blue line here is my line D A. This line here, A B. And that only leads one more to go, which is our green line, which connects C to A. So now I take this angle here, I go C to A. And again, we missed just by a little bit, just due to a little bit of error here. But that error is tolerable for the ease of which it is to analyze these structures. And again, the, the more careful you are in uh, doing your measurements, the slower you do it kind of more accurate these vectors will all line up. And again, all I have to do is measure the length of any of these lines, and that gives me the force or the tension in any of the strings. And so if the, the loads are unequal, we just have to be careful, which I almost wasn't, of keeping track of how long they are. So this one is twice as long as that one because it's twice the weight. Let's up our game. Let's go to three uh, regions now. So A, B, C, D, and E. We have three downward loads all the same, so one unit. Uh, again, keeping with our color coding. Blue, red, and then I think we can get away with just making both of these green, the two interior ones. <clears throat> okay, so what do you think we do? Well, as always, we start with our loads. So let me line my ruler up with the vertical direction here. Let me do one, two inches, three inches. So those are my three loads. So this will be point B, point C, point D, point E. This is the line connecting B to C. This is the force, the line connecting C to D. And then we have D to E. So those are my three loads. Now we do the exact same thing that we've done before. Take my structure, take the line here. That's going to be my line E to A. Now I'm going to take my line here, line the angle up, use my rolly ruler. That's going to be line A to B. And this point where they should be connecting is going to be point A. Now, if I've done this carefully enough, where do these lines have to go? Well, A to C. So we have to be careful here. We go up to point C. Pretty good. So this is line C, A, C, A. Then we have D to A which has to follow the angle of this line. So again, we go up here, D, A. Look how easy that is. Think how long it would have taken us to calculate uh, these forces using free body diagrams. And again, just to be clear, we have uh, a couple of triangles here that represent the free body diagram for the system, right? So this one, B, C, A, is this node here. So that's the triangle of forces for the free body diagram right here. C, D, A, free body diagram for this one. D, E, A, free body diagram for this one. So the three triangles represent the free body diagram for the three nodes. Okay, one final, final system. And then we will end this one. All right, so lots of weights. So on this example, uh, I'm just gonna do it all in uh, black and white, 
just for speed. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Wow, so now we have one, two, three, four, five loads. So, uh, I'm gonna start here, go one, two, three, four, and five. So those are points B, C, D, E, F, and G. So the only one we need to find now is point A. So let's just color code the two outer ones just to be clear about what those two lines are. Those are our reaction forces. So let's start with point G here. Now let's do point A here. So the intersection of these two will be what we call point A. And this is line GA. This is the force here, the tension in this line, AB. Now for our solution to be uh, consistent, um, all, all of these angles better add up. So let's start with point F. Perfect. Let's go to E. Pretty good. Let's go to D. And let's go to C. Look at that. Look how fast that was. And now again, to measure the tension in any of these lines, we just go and measure the length of the vector, and that gives us the force. And again, just to iterate, reiterate, one, two, three, four, five nodes, five, five beat free body diagrams. One, two, three, four, five. Five triangles. And let's just label them all. E to A, F to A, and G to A. And that's point A. So look how fast this is. And the other important thing to realize is, especially if you do these experiments yourself, You'll find, right, I can control these, but this internal configuration is what it is in order for to get the slope of all those lines to meet at point A. So in the next lecture, we'll make a stronger connection between the forces, this diagram, and the form, the shape of the structure.